Blytab. Presenting for Blytab are co-founders Kristina Svetanova and Slavi Slavev. Take it away, guys. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for being here. My name is Kristina, and together with Slavi, we are glad to be here today and to present you Blytab, the tablet for the blind. Actually, the idea came to me during my studies as an industrial engineer. At that time, a blind colleague of mine just asked me to sign him for an online course. And I did it, because he just couldn't do it by himself. And I asked why he couldn't read a normal web page without using a Braille interface. He showed me, and I was shocked. Now let me show you what's the state of that today. Devices that interface between blind user and computer. Essentially, it's a five up to $8,000 keyboard and where a blind person can read, it's extremely limited to just a few words. Imagine reading Moby Dick, five words at a time. And the reason of this is the old, bulky, and limited piezoelectric technology currently used by all manufacturers on the market. And exactly this leads to low literacy rate among blind children. We want to change that. Thanks to our outstanding team and my experience in engineering, we develop an innovative actuating technology. We are using a high-performance membrane bonded to an electrical actuator so that through an airflow channel we can control and deform each braille dot individually. During the last 10 months, we successfully scaled the technology and produced the world's first tactile display without any mechanical elements. Now, we can control thousands of dots. And this is the innovation where other 64 groups and companies worldwide failed to deliver during the last 20 years. But now, let me show you, let me introduce to you our innovative wish for change. And we call it Blightup, the first tactile tablet for people with sight loss. It allows blind users for the first time to learn, work, and play with one single device. And now I will give it to Slavi to run a short demo of the tablet for you. Here also, here also from my side. Awesome. My name is Slavi. So as you can see here, uh, maybe we should switch to the front camera, please. So as you can see here, that's Blightup. And it consists of two main components. We have our tactile screen embedded. And below, we have a touch screen, which acts as a control unit for the whole tablet. And it's activated via voiceover. So the user just has to slide his finger over the screen, just like this, and can control the tablet with, via voiceover. So let's just open an ebook now and see what will happen. Innovation e so now the user can either choose to listen to the, the, the ebook via voiceover. Or by just pressing one single button here, more than 1900 dots will be activated on the screen and the whole surface of the screen will change. So that's the button here. All right, so, so yeah, now the, the, the user can read more than 1,900 dots over the screen. But we also develop our own cloud-based software Braille converter. And here it is. It can convert anything into Braille, like text files, documents, even whole web pages. So for example, we have added the hardware battlefield web page here. And if we press the convert button, it will go to our cloud, <laughs> convert everything, and get it into the tablet. Convert button. In one Drive. second. Drive. And here it is. So now we can again read everything in Braille on the tactile screen. And it's feasible. It's, it's Thank there. You. So overall, LightUp can output because one I'm whole page in Braille. Again. And this makes it the digital e-reader for blind users. And this, can we switch to the PowerPoint slides? And this with the affordable price of 500 US dollars. But what about the market? 
Worldwide, there are more than 285 million blind and visually impaired people. And it's a growing market, not only in the States. But the thing is, and the question, how we are going to bring the tablet to the hands of millions? Well, first, we will start directly to our website online. Moving forward, we're going to scale to global distributors, as we have already 23 signed distribution agreements. And finally, we're going to make BlightUp accessible to developing countries. Today, we are glad to share with you the Minister of Technology and Education in Kenya has already requested 10,000 devices to make their schools accessible for everyone. And exactly this gives us the confidence that we are not only the next innovative hardware company, we are a venture with social mission. We are proud that with BlightUp, we can change the future of millions of children and we can open the way for them to be part of the, heart of the modern high-tech era we live today. Later this month, we'll be opening pre-orders. Sign up on our website and be the first to know. Thank you very much. So my first question is, can we touch it? Can we try it? Of course. Uh, so maybe we'll pass it down. Uh, do you guys want to start with questions first while we're doing that? So is the innovation sort of the process that allows you to to uh, create those bubbles on the uh, yeah. on tablet, that's really sort of the, the, the one thing you guys figured out and the one did? Surface. Exactly. Yeah. The so innovation the itself is the whole display and the process mm. materials we have used. So as I mentioned, we're using a smart fluids and we're using a, a complex network of airflow channels. And the, the innovative part is how to figure out and trigger all of the dots so that they can move yeah. indiv individually. And how fast is it to sort of create, like, when you have a web page, you basically go through a web page and do page up and, you know, get the next one, or? It's exactly, it's, it takes milliseconds, so it's very fast. And here, the user itself can control the pages. Right now, they can go five words by five words. When you look at a product like this, I think it's really remarkable what you've built for a whole variety of reasons. How do you think about the wave that we're seeing at CES right now with Echo and Google Home and natural language processing and all this work that's happening right now where the web is becoming massively available from an audio both input and feedback point of view. How do you, how do you think about that? So it's very important also to mention that in this direction, we, we position LightUp as a consumer electro electronic product because we are not only B2C but also B2B company and we would like not to use the structure channels that uh, the competitors are using right now these bulky machines and it's a very good application for licensing the technology itself from the consumer electronics point of view but also for smart textiles and we have al already received inquiries about licensing you're, oh, yes. you're putting something on the market at $500 where your competitors are at, I think yeah. you said, I mean, thousands, right? F up to 5800 yes. if I remember correctly. Very expensive. So can you talk about how you were able to achieve that price point? Thank you for this question. At the beginning, one year ago, we taught to, to, to sell Blight up at a price of 2500 However, during this time, we managed to optimize our bill of material. And right now, we can achieve, thanks to the Second part, which is um, components that are off the shelf, we are not going to invent the touch screen. And we are able to reduce the bill of material, and we're using two main manufacturing parties, and we're assembling it by our own. So this is the main idea how we're going to reach the 500 US dollars. What's your, what's your distribution strategy? Who would you sell through? Yes, later this month, we are going to uh, pr uh, we are going to launch our pre-sales and we are going to sell directly to our website. It's very important this market to have also uh, very good global distributors, so very good po po positioned. And we have already uh, 23 agreements signed for global distribution. And as I mentioned, B2B is a very strong market for us. For example, T-Mobile already uh, agreed that we are going to distribute to their network. Congratulations, that's awesome. Where are you guys based? We are based in Vienna and we have already entity here in US because right now and from now we want to scale from the States. What is your margin on $500 a unit? 
Um, I, will, I would like to share, however, I will uh, mention that um, we are very good positioned in the margin and we, we are between 40 and 60%. Yeah. At the end of the day, do you see this evolving more into a licensing play where eventually you will have your technology being licensed by many different device manufacturers as opposed to uh, you building the device? So maybe you'll build the device, but you know, the big play is really sort of in, in that technology? Yes, we have. At the beginning, we started with the idea of a tablet for the blind, and we develop it. And here, the next, the next thing is really to put it the technology itself is very scalable. So for example, in consumer electronics, we can use our actuator for the physical movement within the camera sensor. Or in the smart textiles, where we can improve uh, the performance of the athletes when we put in the soul our technology. So there are specific two industries where we would like to focus as next. Are you able to use industry standard hardware for the tablet or whatever's interfacing with the device? And how, how have you arranged that? So, so actually, that, that's, it's running on Android. So it's, uh, we opened also a developer platform. It's completely open source. Uh, anyone can contribute. And just to add to Christina's developer option, we actually uh, we want to sell this product not as an assistive product. So not, not only specific uh, shops where blind people or vision impaired people can go, but also to the mass market shop. And that's also diver diverse us from everyone else. Any last questions? All right, I think we're good. Give it up for Blytab. Great work, guys. All right, so we have one final company that's coming up. Um, it is our editor's choice, which is I will explain in just a second. But uh, judges, what did you guys think of Blytab? Well, this is, I mean, this is really sort of interesting as, because the, the, the pure innovation that suddenly sort of makes feasible something that has never been done before is always sort of interesting in any category. And so that can be life changing, and we really, you know, sort of care about those kinds of opportunities. Um, never looked into the, the market, so can't say that this is, this is a big company in the making, but certainly sounds very interesting. Yeah, I agree. Getting down, I mean, reducing a full order of magnitude and cost um, compared to the competitors is, is pretty huge. And, um, but I then think it's, like, it's like going from the old, you know, tape to an actual screen, right? right. This is sort of the equivalent. So. I, I think the biggest challenge, though, is they've built a great technology, and but. it has a very laudable goal, but it's almost like building a better camera and trying to compete with what was happening in the iPhone and other devices, because voice is moving along so fast. And the thing that I would want to understand if I was digging deeper as an investor is to understand people that are blind how do they view things like Alexa? How do they view audio cues? And how do they view things that allow them to interact with the web and really understand where the demand is? And are people going to spend money on that? Or would they spend money on what's effectively a faster horse and buggy? So the, the real competition isn't necessarily those at least, for, at least in the future, it's not going to be those devices they're talking about. It's going to be that, phones. That's the or, question is, fundamentally, is it a different technology thread that is the biggest challenge for them to build a big business. One of the other points that you guys brought up, I think it was Jeff, about like licensing versus like just selling the, um, the tablet. I mean, is there one or the other that you think is, is more interesting? Well, it's so much harder to build a licensing business as a startup that typically you prove the technology through your own, you know, sort of end-to-end -end integration technology product, and then you start opening the B2B aspect. Um, it's, it's just very time consuming to build distribution and partnerships um, to get technology embedded in someone else because then you depend on their release cycles and so on so forth. You guys, I mean, we all got to touch the screen. I mean, I, I don't know that we have many points of comparison, but, but how did it feel to you? Well, I think haptics are very interesting. If you take a look at what you have today in the most recent iPhone, you have haptics instead of a physical button and you get used to it pretty quickly. So. The idea of having that physical feedback in a screen and things that we touch, that in itself is very interesting. Yeah, you could definitely, I mean, it was, a, it was a great product. You could, you could feel that it was readable. Yeah. Um, and back to the, the point on voice, I think, it's, I think you know, as, as these voice products come out, they are going to get better and better. What I would do is, is actually talk to potential users and say, 
you know, you, you can use these voice activated, um, voice recognizing appliances, but would you just rather read? I mean, the, the, much, much of the content we're going to consume forever, we're going to continue to read. So I, I would spend some time with potential consumers on this, but it did feel like it, it, mm -hmm. it, it worked. Yeah, and I guess that's something that, that we didn't actually ask too much about was how much sort of consumer research they did. So it's possible that they actually they've talked to consumers. And, and, and it's then possible, the, and then they the question is, are there other types of applications where the haptic feedback that they sort of invented could be used? Um, you know, VR systems, you're trying to sort of figure out how to pass actual true, you know, touch through an interface. And, you know, people are sort of using ultrasounds these days. So you, you basically have a sound waves which gives you feedback. You know, there, there's a, that, that's a, a very open sort of area for new technology and, and innovation. What did you guys think of the tablet? I mean, the screen itself was like definitely the coolest part of the technology. What did you feel about like the rest of the tablet? It was really heavy. I think they, it is pretty they need big. to get that form factor uh, down a little bit so that it's viable for everyday use. Yeah, yeah but it, it was a V1.0 product, no, no doubt about that. I, I mean, companies at that stage are what we call the ugly prototype stage, and so it's always 10x heavier, <laughs> uglier, like, you know, I'm sure the first Nest you saw, the first Fitbit I saw were really sort of much bigger than, you know, this. But if they can carry that margin, that double-digit significant margin through next iterations, then I think that they're in a good place. Did you guys, so the stand was... I mean, I should probably have asked this while they were there, but uh, the stand is a separate product. Do you, did anyone know or? Yeah, there was just, it felt like it was just something to demo, I mean, to okay. show, right? It All was right. just a stand. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She says yes. 